Welcome back to more online weightlifting with Ethan. I am Ethan. What we're going to start with today is our warm up. Our warm up, we have four movements that we're going to run through three times. First movement that we have is what's called a sciatic nerve glide. What we're going to do is start on our backs. We're going to have one leg out straight and the other leg we're going to have up and we're going to try and clasp our fingers behind that thigh. So we're going to start here with the leg bent. First thing we're going to do is straighten the leg as much as we can and then we're going to try and flex the toes towards us. So we come down, hold, and then I relax the foot, relax the knee, and then that'll be one. So we're gonna run through 10 of these on each side. Again, we go straight in the leg, flex the foot, flex the toes. So in this position here, with the toes coming down, you should feel a fairly strong stretch in the back of the calf, maybe even the hamstring. Hold for a second or two, and then relax. Again, it'll be 10 on one side, 10 on the other. This, you're then gonna go into your second movement, which is the inchworm. With the inchworm, you've got two options. First one, you'll start standing. We come down, the aim is to keep your legs as straight as you can for as long as you can. So we walk the hands down, we come out into our plank position, and this is where your two options start. Your first option, is to walk the hands back towards the feet. Again, trying to keep those legs as straight as you can for as long as you can, and then come up to standing. The second option, you would come down, walk the hands out into your plank position, and then you would walk the feet towards your hands. So again, I'm trying to get my feet as close as I can to my hands. If you can't get your legs, if you can't keep your legs straight, you know, the whole time, maybe just go as far as you can keep your legs straight and then just try to gain like half a centimeter each time. Because you will be doing five of these, so that'll give you a good chance to try and gain a little bit more range each time. Third movement is called a sway. So this one you can use with no weight, uh, you can use I'm just gonna demo with a kettlebell. Really, you could grab a shopping bag, you know, put some cans of food in there, or use a can of food, up to you. What it's gonna look like will be feet out nice and wide. And then from here, we wanna bend one leg, keep the other leg straight, but we're gonna turn the torso towards the bent leg and bring either that weight or the imaginary weight. So then from here, we go left side, right side, left side, right side. You can think of it almost as if you were like a speed skater, except you're not on ice and your feet aren't moving. So again, I wanna turn the torso towards that bent leg. You will feel a bit of a stretch through that groin. And then as we turn, that groin is then gonna work nice and hard to help pull us towards this direction. So it'll be one, two, Three, we're gonna run through 20. Final movement for your warm up is the single leg toe touch. Again, you're gonna do 10 of these on each side. When you do these, just make sure if you have problems with your balance, make sure you've got something close by. So you can either balance on the wall, grab a broomstick, up to you. What they'll look like, we'll stand on one foot, keep a slight bend in that supporting leg in the supporting leg. Then we're going to hinge at the hip. As you can see, I've still got a slight bend in that knee. Ooh, balance is hard when you're talking. And then we're gonna come down. The aim is to try and touch the toes or even touch the ground. Whee. And then coming back up. Okay, so again, we come down, control down, touch, and then come up. With these, your two options are to either come down to the ground or if you feel like you can't control it all the way down to the ground, you can just try and come down as far as you can 
Go down as far as you can with control and then come straight back up. So let's say you feel good to about here and you're like, oh, if I go any lower, I'm gonna have to kind of push off the ground or I have to compensate elsewhere. Then just stay there, hold for a second or two and then come up. Again, 10 on each side, run through those four movements three times and then that's your warm up. Now, the first piece we've got is uh, a hinge focus. So hinging, it just means from the hip, we wanna push those hips back. So the first movement is a kickstand deadlift. Now, if you don't have any weight, like we said with the sway, that's fine, you can do these with no weight. But if you do have any weights close by or if your dog wants to stay still or your cat wants to stay still, you can also use them. So I'm gonna pretend that this is my dog. So our kickstand deadlift, which way? I'll demo this way. Kickstand just means that we've got one foot behind that's on the toes. So that back foot, we don't want that back foot supporting too much of the weight. If you were to think of the weight distribution between the front foot and the back foot, that back foot wants to be like 5% of the weight. So it's very minimal. Now, I've got my dog or my weight. I'm keeping a slight bend in that front knee and then I wanna push my hips back. So from here I should have a nice stretch in that hamstring and I've still got a little bend in that front knee. And then we come up. So I want, to, want you guys to think of control down, hold for a second at the bottom, and then stand it up nice and fast. So get control down, stop, and then coming up. Control down, stop, coming up. We'll go 10 on one side, and then 10 on the other. Again, back foot on the toes, about 5% of the weight. Arm straight, weight out in front, oh sorry, weight in front, but close to the body. So we come down, hold, feel that hamstring, stand it up. You'll run through 10 on one side, 10 on the other, take a short break, and then you'll move on to your next movement, which is a seated good morning. So everyone should have a seat close by. You can do this on a bench, on a lounge, uh, on a bed, provided your bed's not super high. Either way, you wanna make sure that your feet can touch the ground while you're sitting on whatever you're sitting on. How it's gonna look, feet are gonna be nice and wide. I wanna try and sit up nice and tall. Do whatever you want with your hands. You can have your hands across your chest. You can keep them by your side, behind your back, or you can hold your weight. So from here, I'll show you from the side. So I'm sitting up nice and tall. And then from here, I'm just moving at the hips. So I control down, I come down as far as I can while keeping that nice strong back position. And then we stand it up. So one more time, I'm hinging forward, my back staying nice and straight, hold, and then coming up. With the good mornings, you'll be doing 20 of these. If you don't have a bench or if you don't have something to sit on <clears throat> that is an appropriate height, you can always do these standing. So you can put your feet anywhere between hip distance and shoulder distance, either with the weight or without. So looking from the side, slight bend of the knees, push the hips back and then coming down. Coming down and then coming back up. So again, hips go back hold, and then coming up. With both of these movements, if you're having any issues with you know, the hinging movement, one thing I like to think of is, imagine that you're trying to close like a car door or you're trying to close a drawer in your kitchen. So you know, you've got stuff out of the drawers, you've turned around, oh, I've left it open. Close, and do your thing. So same thing with the kickstands and with the good mornings. So it'll be hips back, hips back. So just think, close the door, 
close the door. If you're unsure if you're getting the hinge pattern, record yourself. Record yourself, have a look back, because what may, you may think in your head, it's like, oh yeah, I've got this, no worries. You might watch yourself back, you're like, oh, oh, I could probably make this a little better. So recording yourself doing any, really anything, lifting, whatever, can make yourself, can help you improve without having a trainer or having someone else watch you. Again, with these two movements, you run through three times. Take as much rest as you want between the two movements. Rest a minute, rest two movement, two movements, two minutes, but I'll leave that up to you. The final piece that we have, similar format, we've got two movements, pretty much rest as long as you need between the two movements. The first one is our dead bug. We've got a few options for this. First one I'll show you with no equipment. So we're gonna be laying on our backs. We'll start with the arms straight up and then the hips and knees bent to 90 degrees. What we can do from here is we're gonna send opposite arm, opposite leg down to the ground and then coming up. Now with these, we wanna try and focus on keeping that lower back in contact with the floor. So again, opposite arm, opposite leg reaches out. We wanna try and get the heel to touch the ground and we wanna try and get the thumb to touch overhead. Then we come up and then change. So up and change, up and change. Now, if that is easy enough for you, you can grab the weight that you used for your deadlifts or for your good mornings. So whether that's your cat, your dog, or a shopping bag, you can hold your weight directly over your shoulders and then we can try and lift the shoulders up off the ground. And then instead of moving the arms and the legs, we can move just the legs. So again, heel touches the ground, boom, coming up. Other leg, touch, up. Again, the whole focus is trying to keep that lower back in contact with the floor and aiming to get that leg out nice and straight. Uh, if you do have a roller or something, something similar, a nice little one that I like is putting the roller between the same side leg and the same side arm. So then what you do from here is try to keep the shoulders off the ground and then send the opposite, arm, oh, the opposite side arm and leg out. So then we come up, down, up, and down. So with this roller or whatever you're using, I'm trying to squeeze that roller as hard as I can. So I'm bringing my arm down and I'm pushing my leg up, trying to squeeze while the other side lengthens, shortens, lengthens, shortens. So with the dead bug, 20 alternating. So we'll go one, two, three, four, go into 20. The second movement for this second piece, or oh, really third piece, is the side plank hip taps. So we'll start on the forearm. Ideally we'd come up having our body nice and straight, legs nice and straight. What we're gonna do here is try control down, get that bottom hip to touch the ground, and then come straight back up. So we control down, hip touches, up. Control down, hips up. In this position, I'm pushing my forearm, my hand and my elbow into the floor to keep my shoulder nice and strong. So I don't wanna relax my shoulder and come down. I wanna keep it, keep it active, push into the ground. Control down, up, control down, up. If having your legs out straight is a little too much, you can do this with bent legs. Nothing really changes from here, except your legs are bent. So again, we come down, hip touch, up. Control down, hip touch, up. So again, as soon as that hip touches, we come straight back up. With the side planks, 15 on one side, turnover, 15 on the other side. Rest as long as you need, and then we'll start back again at the dead bugs. 
with the dead bug and the side planks, along with the piece that we just did of the kickstand deadlifts with the good mornings. We both of those will run through those three times. And again, rest as long as you need. Uh, you can keep the rest short to try and get, <clears throat> pardon me, keep the rest short and try to get the heart rate up a bit. You can treat it almost like a circuit or you can keep the rest longer and aim to move just a little slower. So you can always kind of manipulate these in your own way to kind of find what you're looking for. So that's the weightlifting, online weightlifting at home or in the park or wherever you do weightlifting. Let us know how you go. Uh, don't, be, don't be afraid to video it, tag us on Instagram. Let us know how you go with it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and we'll be happy to answer. Have fun.